Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And what I wanted to do today was I wanted to discuss some products with you that are American-made products that we carry at Self-Reliance Outfitters from a company that I've been working with for a long, long time. You, know, you hear me talk about Lester River Bushcraft a lot. You hear me talk about Duluth Pack a lot. Both companies I've been working with for many, many years. But another company that I've worked with for at least 10 years, I know I've got videos at least 10 years old, maybe 11, that have their products in them, is Tentsmiths. And Tentsmiths is a company that makes canvas products and oilcloth products for reenactors. But I work with Stefan on other projects as well and things that can be bled over from more traditional gear to actually bushcraft and camping environments. And oil cloth is one of those things that's bled over very greatly into the bushcraft community. So what I wanna discuss with you today is four or five of my favorite products from Tent Smiths, as well as one new one that we're carrying now that he just got set up for me in the last couple of weeks here. I'm wearing my Tent Smiths watch coat, and I'll put some video footage in this video of different ways of using some of my favorite pieces of gear. So what we'll do is we'll talk about those pieces first, and I'll just give you a little bit of history behind them and how they were developed. And then we will go into some footage using those products and how I use those products in my daily, you know, forest walks, treks, camping, hunting, all those types of things as we go. So stay with me, fellas. We're going to get started. Okay, so we probably be first served to talk about this watch coat. This watch coat is one of the first pieces of kit that I used from Tent Smiths along with an eight by eight tarp. And when this watch coat was developed originally by Tent Smiths, it was made after an 18th century pattern watch coat, which did not have a hood. So the video I have from like 10 years ago on this watch coat, you'll notice that there's no hood on that watch coat. Since then, in the last few years, I've talked Tent Smiths into adding a hood to this watch coat, an actual oversized hood so that you could put it over top of anything else you were wearing and give yourself a really nice oil cloth hood to bring down around you, okay? And I think that adds a lot to this for versatility. It may not be as period correct for reenacting, but for what we do, it's greatly appreciated, I can tell you. Now, the reason I like to watch coat, and I wear a poncho as well, and the poncho has its own set of valuable uses. But the watch coat gives you an actual rain jacket that you have complete freedom of movement in if you're in a situation where you're hunting or you're moving and you don't want to drag a poncho along with you that may flap around, you can't get your hands out from it as easily, it drags around, you've got big material hanging off of it when you move. A watch coat is really good for those type things and that's why I really like the watch coat. It also folds up very, very small about the size of a water bottle. It's actually smaller than the poncho because there's not as much material in it, but not by a ton. So when you see the poncho, it's not gonna be a whole lot different in size and bulk, but it has different types of versatility, one versus the other. So it really depends on what you're doing. I prefer this watch coat whenever I'm on the move or if I'm hunting, if I'm out on the trap line, I get caught in inclement weather, this thing is the king to me and I love it. It's oversized enough that I can put it on over top of anything I'm wearing, including a wool coat. And because it doesn't have any snaps, toggles, buttons, or ties on it, it is just an open flap that you fold over and you wrap something around your waist like a belt or a shemog or a rope that you wear on the outside of this to hold it closed. But because of that, it makes it more packable because now all you have is the material with nothing hanging off of it to pack up into a small bundle to put in your pack, put in your pouch, put inside your haversack, put in a cargo pocket, anything like that. Okay, the next piece I wanna to talk to you about from Tent Smith is this oil cloth shotgun sleeve. And this was developed from his original flintlock design cover. And it was cut down so it would fit a single shot 12 gauge without a whole lot of overlap. If you try to put a flintlock one on here, it's gonna overlap up in here somewhere because of the length of those things. So we cut this thing down specifically for single shot 12 gauge. It's got a couple of ties on here that you can put some wraps into to keep it tucked tight up against your barrel. It's got one here. I'll undo it real quick. It's got one further down, right around the cheek piece there in the well. And then it's got a flap that's got tie-outs on it as well that you just fold over. And so you have an oil cloth sleeve to protect your single shot 12 gauge in inclement weather. 
which is a good thing. And you can, you know, a lot of times those guys would walk around with that thing kind of half on the gun in inclement weather, still having their hand at the ready around the trigger well and the hammer itself. And then if they saw something they needed to take care of or spotted game in inclement weather, they could easily remove the sleeve and take care of it. And then put the sleeve back on up to that point to protect that gun in inclement weather and all the mechanisms just leaving the wood exposed. But you can also obviously cover the entire gun with this if you're on the move and it's really bad weather. If you're putting this thing inside of a sled on a four wheel or something like that, you wanna protect it or protect it around camp, this oil cloth gun sleeve is very good for that. And again, this is a Tent Smith's product that is made specifically to my specifications for Pathfinder for the single shot 12 gauge, which if you watch many of my videos, you already know is my firearm of choice 90% of the time in the woods. Okay, so what we have here is we have two six by eight tarps. And there's two foot of overlap on these tarps that's meant to be there to connect two of them together. So you have tie out points every two foot. And you have another set of tie out points two foot away from that on one tarp. And the other tarp's got the same thing, except that flap is underneath. So what we've done is we've toggled the upper lap, for lack of a better word. We're gonna flip this tarp back and toggle the other lap. What that will do is allow you to use this for an A-frame or pup tent with your ridge line down the center of that overlap, which gives you a one foot overlap on both sides so that it will not leak by connecting two tarps together. And you have one six by eight tarp that you could carry if you chose to do that. Or if you had two of them and you need a bigger shelter, you carry two, or if your buddy's got one and you've got one, you connect them together to make a larger shelter. So let's flip this side back and toggle it together. Then we'll take it to the woods and look at what I'm talking about set up so you can understand that overlap and what it does and how it toggles together because it's just loop to loop connections with a toggle through it. And of course these are on the outside, but when we flip this tarp over on the inside, the two foot overlap from this tarp will be there and it will connect two toggles that are on the inside. This top tarp that we've already toggled over here, we pull it this direction. You can see that on the inside, you've got an edge toggle here, but on the inside, you have another toggle point here that connects to this one. So we're gonna connect these the same way. We're gonna go toggle to loop. So we're gonna take a loop, shove it through a loop, just like this. And they're kind of stiff, that's okay. And you want a big enough toggle through there that it's gonna stay. So don't be skimpy on the diameter of your toggle. And work it through there just like that. And you've got a toggle to loop connection. And we'll go down and do the rest of them the same way. But we've got all five of them in. Now you can see here our toggle points on the inside of the tarp. And there's one just like it on the outside of the tarp. So it doesn't matter which way you go. We're just going to go toggle the loop. We're going to shove the loop through. And we're going to toggle that thing. Again, don't be skimpy on the size of these toggles. Get a good size toggle in there. So it jams in there good and tight. Okay, once we went through and toggled the inside on all five spots, we now have two tarps that are connected together. All right, spread out here. Because remember, these are six by eight tarps. You have four foot here, four foot here, overlapping two foot here. Now you use this for your center line and you have a foot of overlap on both sides to shed water. So now you have a very large eight by 10 A-frame shelter, plenty big enough for two people or even three plus gear inside. Now you can kind of see how this works. You've got it flat that's toggled all the way along here that overlaps and another toggled flap on the outside. So you got one to the inside, one to the outside, the peak, is going to stay bone dry because this side's going to shed water where the overlap is. And that gives you a large 8x10 type tarp that you can do multiple configurations with. 
take that apart. You got one six by eight, which is plenty big enough for one guy in a solo overnight situation, something like that. A couple days out hunting, that six by eight should do you just fine. But it's designed that way to be used as separate pieces as well. And there's certain things you can do with this because of the way it's set up. And one of those things I'm gonna show you today is called the cowboy bedroll. And this makes a perfect cowboy bedroll. And then if you're carrying both tarps, not that you have to, because you can always just sleep right on the ground with a bedroll in fair weather, obviously right beside a campfire. But if you chose to have two tarps, you could set one of them up in a bedroll configuration. And the other one is your cover element. We'll talk about that in the woods here in a few minutes. But first, I want to show you how I put this bedroll together. So the first thing I did was I just laid this six by eight tarp out with the six foot width and the eight foot length. Now, I took a blanket, or first of all, I took a sleeping pad. This is just a yoga pad that I use that works pretty well. And I put it on the bottom right in the center. And then I fold, folded my Pathfinder blanket three ways, just like this, kind of in an envelope. So you can see it's folded over here and then over here and put it in the middle. Now, here's where the stuff comes in. When you fold this flap over, what's gonna happen is you're going to expose these tie-out points that are at that two foot mark right here, all the way along the side of this. So now when you fold the other half over, you're gonna have tie-outs that meet this. And you can then toggle those up to make this an enclosed bedroll. And then when it opens up, it'll have double flaps, double wool blanket flap on top of you and that pad on the bottom. And then of course you can put leaf letter on the ground as well for insulation from conduction. But this will give you a good manageable bedroll that you can carry made from the six by eight tarp. So now we'll take the other side of this and we'll fold it over. And as you can see, as we bring it over, it's going to match up with these points. And that's where that extra two foot overlap comes into play. And it's very good because of that, because now we not only have something we can connect two tarps together with, with overlap for a larger shelter, we also have something we can use as a complete bedroll and tie it together as well. Now on the bottom side of this bedroll, you've got an area that you can overlap this and meet here, which forms a pocket on this end. And the reason for that is it closes in the bottom. You don't need eight foot in length. So even if you fold it up a foot, you still got seven foot in length there. And what you can do here is you can take this outside tie out and you can push it through here. And you should be able to take this and pull it up. And this may take a little bit of finagling to do this, but you can put this through all three of these, just like this and get yourself a stick and work it in there, toggling stick to work in there. Just like that, work that knee through. And now you've got that connected here and it's folded here. So you're in pretty good shape and you've got a pocket here that you can put things that you might need once you unroll your bedroll. You can put, you know, some kind of a nightlight in here, some kind of a lantern or candle set up in here, a spare pair of socks a nightshirt, a nightcap, things like that can all go in here and get rolled up in your bedroll. And then we just start rolling this bedroll up in the bottom once we toggle the other points together. Now, generally speaking, I'll toggle the fold. I'll toggle up one. I may put a toggle in here just as a keeper up at this last one before the top, but I like to have a large flap here that I can up three, open up three ways. So you open that side, open this side, and then you open this and you open this to get inside this thing. So now I have double layers of wool, double layers of oilcloth over top of me when I get inside this sleep system. And my pad starts right here where my head's going to be. Now we get ready to roll this up. I generally will take this top flap and roll it over a little bit just to give myself waterproofing there. And I'll roll from the bottom up now, depending on how I'm going to carry this bedroll, if I'm going to carry this thing in shoulder fashion or in backpack fashion, one of the two, I would put a doubled up piece of rope in here and I would begin to roll this up around it just like this, keeping everything 
as neat and tidy as possible going around, just like this. If these toggles are loose, get bigger toggles. Make them so they're not loose. This is just a good example of how to set this up. Tuck all this down inside. And this final flap over right here, where this comes together, is generally where I'll put something like an ax if I'm carrying one, or a bedroll cook set of some kind. I'll put that inside that last fold, because this may be the only thing I need to carry other than a haversack at that point. And then I'm gonna take two pieces of cordage that I have tied bowling knots in, and I've left myself a long tail on that bowling on purpose. And the reason I do that is so that I can come in here and wrench this thing down really hard, just like this, and come all the way around again and catch that tail and tie a square knot in that tail. So a square knot, a loop right here, it's got a bowling knot in it, gives me that ability to wrench that thing down tight. And I can do the same thing on this other side. Now, once I've got that done, I'll just creep this loop up here just like this. And this is, this loop is at the bottom where my toggles are at. I'll get this to the right dimension for a shoulder strap or a double strap for a backpack. And I'll just come in here and tie it off at a half inch. Just like that. It's real, real simple to carry it that way. And I'm ready. One of the things I wanted to show you on this tarp is how I connect this ridge line on the outside. It's pretty simple. All you do is take your toggle, put it through the back side, just like this, and then fold it underneath, just like this, and shove it forward. That gives you a connection to an outside line. You don't have to worry about drip lines that way, and you can connect all of the connections down the tarp that way, and then use the prusik on the ends to stretch it out. Then your complete ridge line is on the outside of your shelter at that point. All right, so here's our bedroll inside the other half of our six by eight, or the other six by eight tarp, excuse me. We've got one six by eight set up in our shelter, and I've just got the flap tucked behind right now which would be kind of an awning, you can see down here at this end. And then the bedroll in here on top of the leaf pile, an unfurled ray to sleep in. It makes a really, really good shelter. And then you can obviously drop this out and guy it out, or you could bring this all the way to the ground if you want to trap more heat in there and still have yourself just two foot on the ground and then the rest on a slant, give yourself a comfortable night's sleep. Tent Smith has made a watch coat for years. I'm sure you've seen me wear that watch coat in videos past because it's based on an 18th century style pattern. What we wanted to do is we wanted to update that pattern to include a hood so that you basically had a hooded rain jacket that you could put on over the top of anything else that you happen to be wearing because it's a little bit oversized and it's also long so it keeps the bottom of your pants dry as well. Very much like a Western duster in a thinner material. And the key to this whole thing for me is being able to make this thing small enough to be able to carry it multiple ways and also be useful enough that I can basically hunker down by a tree and run this thing around my head and shoulders and wrap it around my legs and wait out a storm if I need to. And I okay, like I said, you know, I like to not be too encumbered when I'm hunting. I do carry a backpack sometimes and also a pack basket, but I tend to leave those things at a base area and then walk away from that and come back. So I like to have some things on me that are going to cover me in case of an emergency. And one of those things is some type of an outerwear element that's going to protect me from rain. Now, today, all I've done in this case is underneath this oilskin vest, I have a chamog wrapped around my waist with that watch coat inside of it. And I've got this oil cloth just pulled over the top of that from this vest. And you can see what I've done is I've just rolled this thing up into the shemag. And so when we take this thing out of here, we can then use the shemag to wrap around our waist because it's an open front system. It doesn't have a belt. It doesn't have any buckles. It doesn't have any snaps. It doesn't have any toggles. It's just a piece of fabric that's sewn into a rain jacket with no ball. 
It's very, very simplistic, but it's very, very effective. So let's take this and throw this Shimaga aside for a second. Let's open this dude up and you can see the size of this. And when we open this up, you can see that it has a large hood, which is what I really like. And we'll just take and put this bad boy on over the top of everything we're wearing now. Kind of yank my sleeves up inside there. Okay, so you can see that this thing is plenty oversized to go over everything that I'm wearing. I've got a couple layers of jackets on here with a puffy jacket and a vest. And this thing wraps solid all the way around that. And the hood is plenty big enough to even to go over a large bulky hat like the one I'm wearing. And then I can take this and tuck it all the way up just like this, bring it across, tie that shamag around my waist, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Just like this. And again, all you need to do is tie that thing into some kind of a square knot configuration is fine. And you're ready to go. If you wanted to, you could put your knife on the outside by putting it right on that thing. And you have now rain gear that you can hunt in or you can hunker down beside a tree or whatever you need to do. And you can see this thing's plenty long. It comes down below my knees, which is exactly what I want. So the beauty of this piece of gear is it's fairly small to carry. It's easy to carry in multiple ways. I can put that thing in a backpack. I can strap it to a belt that I'm wearing over top of everything else, or I can wrap it up in a shamandana or a shamog, wrap that around my waist and carry it that way. It's really small enough you could almost put it in a cargo pocket if you were wearing cargo pocket type pants. Okay, for size comparison here, this is the oil cloth poncho. It's about the size of the 64 ounce water bottle, I would say. When it's all said and done, I've just got it tied up very similar to the way I do a bedroll with a long tag on a loop so that I can tie it off. Now, there's a lot of things that I like about this poncho. This poncho does have some toggles on it that fold up inside. Hey, Zon. Let's get this thing unfolded here real quick. Okay, so if you look at this poncho, it has a toggling loop here that you can bring all the way around to the back if you want to and do a toggle and loop connection there. Just like that. That basically wraps that poncho around you at that point. Gives you more freedom of movement if you need it, but keeps that poncho close to your body. Now you can connect that in the front as well. I like to connect it in the back. Now you can also, from the other side, you can pull this thing up and bring it around, tuck it inside, and you can toggle it to the front. Really kind of depends on your preference on how you do that. And you can then toggle it in the front like that. And again, give yourself freedom of movement. You need it for the most part. It's not perfect, but for a poncho, it's pretty good. You can still definitely raise a firearm if you needed to while you're hunting. So that keeps the poncho close to your body. Whether you do it in the front or the back is kind of really up to you. Now it also has tie outs on the hood here so that you can either make the hood smaller in dimension if you need to, or so that you can tie the hood together if you need to, if you're going to make a shelter out of this thing. You need some way to tie this hood down, to close that opening. You have ties built into it for that as well. This poncho, it's made very much like any other military poncho, except for instead of having grommets, it has loops. So it's made to also be a shelter system, but it's also made to plug into poncho liners of certain types. I have a sample here of a product that we're developing called the Forester's Quilt. And you've heard me call these things whoobies before, a military term used for a poncho liner. This is more than just a poncho liner because it will do a whole lot of things for you. So we're calling it the Forester's Quilt because it can also be used for an over or under quilt. It's quite heavy. It is definitely much thicker than most poncho liners are. And it does not have a hood. It has a zipper here to open it up so that you can use it for a poncho liner if you choose to. One thing this does have is it has a set of tie outs here. It has a strap here and a toggle here 
and they're just not clipped together at this point. This goes through here like this, gets threaded in, and then you have an actual buckle connector there. And you can actually cinch this thing down, get to where you're comfortable, cinch it down, and then wear your poncho over the top of this. So that you have that extra layer of warmth underneath this large poncho as well. And we can still toggle this thing from the front like we did before. And now we have a huge amount of protection underneath here because we not only have a jacket on, we have that liner inside here as well as having the poncho over the top of that, which locks in everything, and gives us a good barrier against the moisture. If we need to open things up, it's easy enough to do that. We can open this up to give us a little bit of breathability as well. Now, the way this Forester quilt is built, it doesn't have toggles in the corners, but what it does have is it has shock cords. And we'll talk about that more when we get into talking about this Forester's quilt. But they plug in very much like a toggle. You just push the tail through and turn that cinch down it becomes a toggle inside there. And so now it's toggled into the system if that's what you choose to do. All right, guys, listen, that's just a quick overview of some of the pieces and parts that we developed with tent smiths over time. I've got some footage in here I'm gonna to add to this video that shows how to use particular certain pieces because there's a lot that goes into this six by eight shelter half type system to make it way more versatile than I could talk about really quick in just a few minutes. It's better to put some video out there so you can see that. The poncho we talked about, the watch coat we talked about, and we also have talked about the gun sleeve. All of those products are US made. They're all made by Tensmiths. They're all made of oil cloth. Again, oil cloth is not a cheap thing to buy. It is fairly expensive, but it is very, very durable, very traditional, and it's very good equipment to use in a wintertime or a rough, rugged environment like the thorns, briars, and brambles out here in Southeast Ohio. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.